Giving yet another push to the reform process, the government has approved the revised norms to attract more foreign direct investment into the country, which will give a push to economic growth. To talk to us more on that, we have with us the Commerce and Industry Minister, Mr. Anand Sharma. Thank you, sir, for joining us here on DD News. So this has been touted as the next chapter in big ticket reforms. What was the need and the rationale behind opening up so many more sectors and increasing the cap in the sectors that were already open where FDI is concerned? Well, we have raised the cap in some of the sectors so that more investment can come in. And we have changed the route of approval. There are many sectors where we thought the faster approval would be useful, right? Say the refineries, the entire petroleum and gas sector, commodity exchanges, power exchanges. So all these will go to the automatic approval route up to 49%. And beyond 49 sectors where it's 74% uh, or 100%, that will in any case come to the FIPB. Second, what is the purpose of the FDI policy? That is to supplement the investments in domestic economy. One is your domestic investment, second is the foreign direct investment. So you have to see that where is the need to do more, to create more space and to make it more attractive for the foreign investors. This is a constant process. This is a process which is never frozen. Policy formulation is an ongoing thing and the government have to do it what is in the best interest of the country's economy. So defense and telecom are two sensitive sectors and there has been a lot of debate on opening up these sectors for foreign investment. How do you concur with the critics who are uh, criticizing this move of opening up these sectors to foreign investment? The critics use mobile handsets, they use laptops, internet. So let them first reflect. If this country is not making any of those uh, technologies itself, and gets the technology, gets the investment, manufactures. Today, Nokia's largest or world's largest mobile handsets manufacturing unit is in Chennai in India. Now, if the FDI had not come in the telecom sector, Nokia would not have come in. Those handsets would not be manufactured in India. You will be dependent on imports, including the Chinese-made uh, mobile handsets. Your towers, telecom towers, you have to create the infrastructure, you need investment, you need technology. So what is the sensitivity there? Sensitivity is more in embedded softwares. That is a technology issue, that's not an FDI issue. So people have to understand with clarity what we are saying. Now where is the other sector? Defense already 26% is allowed, we have not raised the sectoral cap. What only we have done, something which this country accepts in principle, that if there is a FDI proposal by defense manufacturers who bring in state-of-the-art modern technology where the proposal per se breaches the se sectoral cap of 26%, that proposal would be considered, but on a case-to-case -case basis by the CCS, the Cabinet Committee on Security. Now, we have to understand, like in case of telecom, where today India has close to 1 billion subscribers, Go back 15 years ago, what was the tele-density of India? How many people had access to telephones, the fixed landlines? It was we had one of the lowest tele-densities of the world. Today we have one of the highest in the world. This is important. Now, we were not making all this ourselves. If we had not taken those decisions, today uh, most of India would be uh, not... Uh, connected at all when it comes to the latest technologies and how it has changed lives. Flow of information, people remaining in touch, getting better informed. It has also led to social inclusion and financial inclusion. Same is the case with defense. Now we are one of the biggest uh, defense buyers in the world, India, in the global market for various systems. Our defense budget is fairly substantial. This country needs also to manufacture. We cannot remain import dependent. We should be in a position to assimilate high-end technologies, to bring them into this country, into the manufacturing of defense systems, and also to export to other countries. Mm. Say, there is an outgo of foreign exchange. What you are importing is made in another country. 
So how is security affected? What you will be making yourself will make you unsecure. And what you are importing, that ensures your security. But what you will be manufacturing here will make India insecure. I, I do not buy this logic. Sure. Now let's go across to some multi-brand retail, which was opened up last September, last year in September. Uh, reasons for the revised norms in that sector? Well, uh, some clarity was required. We had meetings with the global retailers, domestic retailers. One is more flexibility in space. Policies are not cast in stone. Policies cannot be rigid. Policies must have inherent flexibility so that space can be given. What is the objective of the policy? That must be met. That is to attract investment, technology, to benefit the farmer, to benefit the consumer, and to create jobs. Mm. So that can only be met when the FDI will come in. So if there was one issue was with regard to the need, what should be the cap uh, on back-end infrastructure investment? Our minimum threshold for FDI to be allowed in this sector is 100 million US dollars. When you look at China, look at other countries, nobody had these conditions. We have done it. Now, out of that 100 million, 50 million now will go to back end infrastructure, back -end infrastructure whether it's the cold chain, the cold storage, processing industries and all. After that, it would be need-based. These big global retailers eventually may come with half a billion, one billion, two billion US dollars. Now, beyond a point, they may end up acquiring, they may end up adding more, but that would be need-based. Those are business decisions. We cannot expect that if somebody is going to bring in a billion dollars, say it's 500 million, you must have back end because it's basically opening up the front end also. Mm -hmm. So that's a, one decision. Second is uh, allowing the states to make their uh, own choice so, but that for opening more board. cities. No, you don't have to have all uh, states on board. It's a, we are a democracy. You have uh, states which are forward looking, which look at the interest of the farmers and consumers who are on board. And there are states which unfortunately are controlled by parties, particularly the BJP, which has a partisan agenda. It's not an ideological issue at all. But uh, people stand to benefit. That's important. But the issue was to allow states uh, where it was initially permitted only in cities with a population of one million plus, A, to overcome a dichotomy. Because we had allowed a special dispensation for smaller states, landlocked states, States which have strengths in agriculture and horticulture, whether it's Jammu Kashmir or Uttarakhand or Himachal or Assam, they all have been allowed to open up smaller cities of their determination. Other states which have embraced the policy also wanted the same. So we've left it to the states. But do you think this is going to open up debates on hurting mom and pop stores in those smaller states? Nowhere it has hurt. Nowhere in the world. Well, how, how will it hurt? I, I fail to understand. Retail sector has been open to investment. Whether it is Indian investment, whether it is a Bharti Fresh or Bayani stores or Reliance Fresh or Aditya Birla Group stores, or whether it is investment coming in do dollars or euros or pounds sterling, what difference? It's only the color of the money. Your retail sector is open. Multi-brand retail sector is open to investments for the last 15 years. So what difference it has made? The big retailer, the organized retail, has only 4% of the market share even today. 96% is with the small retailer. You are talking of big stores coming up, which will require maybe 50,000, 100,000 uh, square feet of uh, space. These are not going to be, that space is not going to be available in your neighborhood stores. So actually they will improve and they stand to benefit because they, what is happening elsewhere that will happen here too and what has happened with the Indian organized retail that what is made because it's the scales of economy the, what will be made by the big retailers organized retailers is also sold to the traders those who have the trade license that is the Kirana stores, small stores it is happening already in Delhi it is happening in Merat it's happening in Jaipur, it's happening in Calcutta, the, where the metro stores are. Where in Delhi is the metro store? Ask the critics. 
is somewhere in West Delhi. And right from Chandni Chowk to Lajpat Nagar, the small Kirana store owners go and buy at the cash and carry point, and they sell to you and me. So this is uh, illogical for anybody to suggest that. So how have the revised norms kept in uh, mind the interest of the farmers, the interest of the MSME sector? Because farmers cooperatives and agricultural cooperatives have also been included in yes, these revised we have norms now. For the sourcing, earlier the uh, for the farm sourcing. Agricultural cooperatives and farm cooperatives were not included, and there was a demand, and we accepted that. This was a very justifiable demand, so that the businesses, the investors, can source from them, and that is also included in the category of the SMEs. But here, the only difference is that these cooperatives movements in India are growing; they are big. We have not kept that cap of two million. We have raised the cap from one million to two million. in case of msmes because the definition of medium industry is different from micro or small and that's what is allowed so we have only corrected what should have been uh, there in the first place and the engagement as such will be at the first entry stage or the first engagement this means that if you are a micro enterprise today and you establish a relationship with a major investor the investor will invest not only in the infrastructure but also in the vendor in the form of technology synchronization also uh, and human resource development training in skills so once all that is there it's a relationship which builds up Now, if a micro enterprise becomes small, if a small becomes medium, then we'll say that okay, now cut off. Now, because you have done well, you have been competitive. Now you are not going to get any benefits. Now we'll put you out of business. We will be pushing people in the wrong direction, not encouraging or incentivizing, but telling them to do something which they shouldn't be doing at all, because people, when they if they have to survive, then they will. just change the name but continue uh, with that uh, relationship so that we have to see that how we ensure that the small entrepreneur those who have grown remain in business and are not denied benefits of the policies in any manner so the parliament session is going to start very soon do you think the opposition is going to be raising these issues in parliament and how are you going to counter them there we have countered them in the past we can counter them provided they allow a healthy debate as in democracies and do not go in for disruption and preventing the parliament from functioning we are an elected government in office and policy making is entirely the remit and the jurisdiction of the elected government so if i could ask you the fti where it stands at this point and the current account deficit how much of a concern is it for india it is a major concern because we are a import dependent country particularly for petroleum and gas fertilizers even edible oils and gold imports have been a matter of concern and that gets reflected in the trade account deficit now FDI is very important because there are three ways to get the foreign exchange into the country in the capital foreign capital one is through foreign direct investment which is safest or the first choice because it creates assets it creates jobs second is the FII money which institutional investments that will come that can also go that will not stay that will not stay here in the ground it's a fixed asset third are the ecbs the external commercial borrowings so it makes good sense to make india as attractive a destination for foreign investment as we can who are the global giants who've shown interest in india and uh, how everybody has shown interest but they have to make their own decision how soon can we expect them This to set up their shop decisions only their boards can decide we have created an environment which is welcoming and supportive now they have to make their choice thank you sir for talking to doodarshan news you're welcome